Hello and welcome to the Gaming News Roundup. My name is Amata and I'm going to give you all the latest in gaming as of the 1st of May 2012. A Dirt Showdown demo has been released, showing off both the game's single player and multiplayer. In the single player you play an 8 ball race under the shadow of San Francisco's Golden Gate Bridge. With classic dirt mechanics like boost to sprint ahead of rivals and all that good stuff and once you've completed this race you can challenge a friend online to unlock the rampage multiplayer mode in rampage eight i eight drivers compete in an online demolition derby earning points for crashes smashes and elimination people who download the demo will also be invited to sign up for racenet an uh, online hub that will bring together cody's racing game communities and all that good stuff and basically have an online profile with all your points and achievements like that for other people to look at which encourages obviously friendly competition between everyone which is definitely a good um, I'm not really a fan of racing games myself but Dirt has always been one of the very well tuned ones so I'd say if you're into this sort of thing definitely give the demo a look-see because I quite like that they're showing a little bit of the multiplayer as well because obviously once you've done with the single player that's where you're going to be spending pretty much all of your time if you're playing this game. The Daily Mail is once again showing its ignorance asking in a blatant scaremongering headline are games creating a generation of murderers even though the Daily Mail is once again showing its ignorance as they post a blatant scaremongering headline Are Games Creating a Generation of Murderers? based on a recent survey that has been conducted by a professor of communication and psychology at Ohio State Uni. Now they have said this despite the fact that the guy himself has said that that's not what he's trying to say at all with his study. Basically what his study has concluded is that people who play a lot of games such as Resident Evil 4 and things like that and people who play a lot of FPS games and basically where precise aiming is used it basically it might be teaching them to shoot more accurately in a real life situation but obviously claiming that games are pe making people murderous is more of a shocking paper selling headline even though the guy himself saying he's not claiming that this game necessarily leads people to commit violent crimes, just that the study suggests it can teach people to shoot more accurately, which to be honest I'd say is debatable at best. I mean, with a game like Resident Evil 4 where there's not really any help at all apart from the laser sight, maybe, but on a game like Call of Duty where there's hitscan weapons and things like that, well no, because there's not hitscan in real life, so once again this is just blatant scaremongering tactics from the Daily Mail and most people with a brain will know not to be suckered in but there's going to be people who will fall for it as always because they will believe anything they're told and believe that games are corrupting our children and I just find this whole thing very frustrating to be honest and I just really want them to find the new scapegoat already well, but I don't think that will happen anytime soon we just kind of have to deal with it and ignore it as best as we can because they're going to twist any facts that they can to their agenda to make it seem like actually we're actually not just people having fun, we're training to be murderers or terrorists or whatever it is they're coming out with this week. So yeah, unfortunately more bad press for gaming, but it's not all bad news. Most people will know that it's the Daily Mail and they talk absolute bollocks. Finally, God of War Ascension has had multiplayer announced of all things. I don't think any of us saw that coming, me included. Obviously with God of War the single player has always always been the focus and there's never once been an inclusion of any more than one player in the God of War series and for good reason. The story and the storytelling is one of the franchise's strong points so I'm a little bit concerned that they've decided to go to this route but the details that they have is that it's playable by up to eight players and two teams competing against each other to defeat a large god of war worthy boss for victory. Now Kratos will not feature in the multiplayer which is good. It'll be your own Spartan warrior with the choice to worship one of four gods which would be Ares, Hades, Zeus or Poseidon, each god granting different abilities, weapons and armour and basically affecting what stat boosts and things like that you have. Although, <clears throat> one thing that's slightly concerning is that each player will be given the Blades of Chaos, although different swords, hammers and blah will be become available through levelling up, which is interesting. Obviously the Blades of Chaos are one of the things that make 
the God of War combat so distinctive. So it would be interesting to see how the combat would handle with a sword or a hammer or something like that, for example. But I'm very intrigued by this decision. I am a little bit concerned that, that the single player will suffer, even though the multiplayer isn't going to feature any of the lore or anything like that. I'm still concerned because it is technically going to be taking away development time, or taking away focus, should I say, from the single player campaign, which is obviously what we're here for with God of War. But it um, it sounds like they're doing some things right and some things a little bit concerning, like the fact that the law is not affected or even included in the multiplayer is definitely encouraging because I was a bit concerned that maybe they would make you play the multiplayer to get all the content or things like that, but it doesn't seem the case. So although I'm a little bit concerned, it actually seems like they're doing it as right as they possibly can. I'm just intrigued as to what made them make this decision to begin with, given that God of War is not exactly known for ever entertaining the idea of multiplayer, but I guess we aren't to know and we'll just have to look forward to more information and see where they're going with this. Anyway guys, that's me done for the day. I hope you've enjoyed watching the video. Like, subscribe and do all the normal stuff to the video, and I'll see you again soon.